and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, hi, welcome. My name is Gwandunji and I talk about books and I talk about writing and I talk about other stuff around writing or around my life. You know, it is what it is, but welcome because today we are going to talk. Today I'm going to be talking about creating a good writing practice, building a good writing practice for the success of your writing, for the success of this career that you have chosen that is weird and sometimes seems really complicated, but we're figuring this out together, you and me. So I'm glad you're here. The first thing that I want to talk about is I met my goals. I know this wasn't something that I had shared with everybody, but my goal had been to get up 20 videos as fast as I possibly could so that I could have a bank so that new people like you, if you're new, could come and find out about me and about the things that I'm passionate about and could watch some of my videos. So I'm very pleased about that. I met that goal, smashed it, pow! I'm really happy about that. In the next couple of months, I will be working on another goal. And this one concerns my WordPress blog that has been starved of content. I'm really, I'm embarrassed about it, but the reason why I'm talking about my WordPress blog is number one, to keep accountable to more people than just myself and those who surround me who let me get away with shit, I can get away with shit, but also to create a good writing practice and to invite more people to consume my content, my written content, which is what I'm all about. I love making videos, don't get me wrong, I love this. It has proven to be interesting, it has proven to be challenging, and it has proven to stretch the limits of my creativity, the things that I talk about, on the fly, it has been a great experience, but I am ultimately a writer before I'm a video creator, or maybe now I'm both equally the same. <laughs> My goal is to have a blog that is thriving, that is challenging, that is interesting for people like myself who are on a writing journey, or sometimes, sometimes I just like to tell stories. As you can no doubt tell from the title of this video, it's to talk to you and to talk to myself about the things that we need to do to create a good writing practice, because it's important. Words just don't magically find themselves on the page. We have to actually sit down, take the time out, and put words on paper, whether it is digitally or physical paper, you know, your choice. But we've got to make the time to do it. One of the myths of writing a book that I completely believe, but it's so not true, is that all you need to do is put words to a paper, Go ahead and edit it as best you can. Ask some other people to go ahead and read your work so that they can tell you what they like, what they didn't like. See if you want to change the stuff that you've written and then go about finding someone to help you get your book published who's usually a literary agent. And then a publisher would pay you for your book and then all you had to do was sit back and write your next book and the next book and so on and so forth. This is not to say that that's how this business was run before, but in this new age, you are like a startup. You and your writing are basically a startup and you need to understand that this is a business whether you self-publish or not and sometime later I will go ahead and have a conversation with you about self-publishing and traditional publishing and what that means for you and your work but the one thing that I found out is whether you self-publish or not you still have to understand this business of publishing and take whatever measures it is that you can to figure out where you fit in it, to figure out how you can work it so that you can be successful, which is what we're all looking for, success. When I discuss some of these things about the business of publishing, when I find information, I put it out there and I create a video like this one, I am going to put them all together in a playlist that I will probably call the business of publishing. So this one will be the first one in a series of the business of publishing videos. The very first thing that is more important than anything else in this business is that you must have work. If you do not have work to sell, then your business, you know, you can't start anyway. How do you get from having a great idea to having a great manuscript that you can send off to literary agents or that you can send off to the next stage if you're self-publishing, how do you make that happen? And today it's all about creating and building a good writing practice. What this means is that practicing writing makes you a better writer. Practicing writing, putting time aside for yourself to write, 
sectioning it off and telling everybody, look, I'm unavailable. I can't do anything for you because I am writing and having them honor that time for you is of vital importance. With regards to building a good writing practice, I have some tips and I'm going to share them with you and hope that they will help you as you write and help me as I write because practice makes perfect. This is a song my dad used to sing for piano practice. We were not very happy with him when he sang it. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. I guess if I practice, then better I'll be. No, Dad. No, we didn't enjoy the song. Not when we were practicing, but I see it. I see the value, so thank you. I have five different tips that I am going to share with you about building a good writing practice. The first one, write every day. Every day. I mean it. Write every day. Whether it is stuff that's going to make it into one of your books or not, whether it's going to go on your blog or not, the practice of writing, practice makes perfect. Practice will make you a better writer and you need to do it. Set aside time during your day when nobody can reach you. Turn off your phone, unplug the television, turn off the internet if you must so you don't watch Netflix. For writing every day, it is good for your business. And whether you like it or not, the moment you decided you are going to write something, you started a business. The second thing is to read. Read good books, read bad books, read books that have bad reviews, read books that have great reviews. Read in genres that you are not used to, that you are not familiar with. Don't be afraid to mark your books on the inside with highlighters or pens or post-it notes. Understand the reason why some of the books that you absolutely love, everybody hates, or the books that you absolutely cannot stand have great reviews. Read as many books as you can, set a goal for yourself, and consume other people's writing. It will help the neurons in your brain maybe spark differently and create new pathways ways so that your creative genius can expand. Number three, and this one is a challenge for me, is to create relationships with other writers. I am great with creating relationships on social media, on forums, with people that I have never met and will probably never meet. That is where my strength is. So there's an author's group here where I live, but they meet on weekdays at 9 p.m. The reason to cultivate relationships with other writers is that they say interesting things that matter to you, that matter to your business. They can give you tips, they can give you ideas of places that you can go that are very inspiring in your own city. They may have connections that you need and you have the opportunity to support some other author's business so that they can reciprocate when your time comes. And I think that's how business is done. Scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. The fourth one is to be honest. There are some people who have been given a burden of writing so that their soul would be crushed if they did not sit down and put words to paper and get the story that is bubbling inside of them out. But for most of us, that is not how we work. They have an idea for a story. We think that it would be great to have a book out so that you can share the story with other people. If you're honest with yourself about the kind of writer that you are, or honest with yourself about the mood that you're in, or honest with yourself about your health and what you need to do in order to get yourself feeling better, or honest with yourself about mental health, or even honest with yourself about the story that you're writing, that it's not really that good and maybe you should abandon that project. And finally, point number five, be consistent. There was something our teachers in primary school used to say, one by one makes a bundle. And that is so true with regards to having a writing practice. Even if you write only a paragraph at the time that you have set aside for yourself to write, the next day you write a paragraph, the next day you write another paragraph, and before you know it, your work will be complete. And while the pointers that I have shared with you, which I'm going to be using myself, are a great foundation for building a writing practice, they can basically work for almost anything that you are choosing to do that are part of your big goals of your big dream. Please don't forget to check out my blog. Again, it is Buandunji. Dot WordPress dot com. Come visit. So that was all I had for you today. Five tips to help you build a wonderful foundation for your writing practice. We are running businesses, y'all. We are running our own startups. Isn't it exciting? If there are any other tips that you think I should have included that I forgot, 
please go ahead and leave them in the comment section. I will be looking out for that. If you found this information helpful, like this video and please share this video with other people who may gain value from it. And don't forget to subscribe. As always, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful week, and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye!